Earlier, I spoke to the former Prime Minister of Ukraine, Arseniy Yatsenyuk, and he told me the most important message people should take away from this day. Never give up if you fight for freedom and liberties. Even despite the fact that the enemy is bigger, stronger and more aggressive, you can win if you stand your ground. And we as Ukrainian people, we stand our ground together with our uh, uh, American, British uh, and free world allies. So the main message, fight like hell and you're going to prevail. And uh, considering the messages that have been put out today from the British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, saying we need to give Ukraine what it needs. We need to accelerate and not slow down from the commitments that Ukraine is getting from a lot of European countries, from the fact that um, Polish tanks, Leopard tanks have begun to uh, arrive. What do you think this will mean practically for Ukraine and its attempt not only to resist the advance of Russia, but to actually push Russia out of your country? Look, I commend your government and your prime minister, both Rishi Sunak and your previous consecutive prime ministers. And I'm very grateful to the British people uh, for this uh, rock solid support of the Ukrainian fight for independence. What it matters, it matters uh, uh, um, uh, follows. The quicker Ukraine gets ammunition, weaponry, and the rest of the military staff and training, actually. The quicker Ukraine is to prevail this war. Otherwise, this plays directly into the hands of Russians. Putin wants to wage this war as a war of attrition. Actually, he believes that he can somehow bend the unity of the free world. The, he believes that the cracks will emerge in the European Union, the cracks in, in the US political establishment. And by in the time, he uh, can push Ukraine towards some kind of crazy negotiations, which never happened unless Russia completely withdraws from the Ukrainian soil, completely. Uh, so it, it is important to get uh, um, uh, weapon uh, on the fast track as quick as possible in order to launch a counter-offensive. Now, you were Prime Minister from 2014 to 2016, February 2014 to April 2016. And your period in office coincided with the annexation of Crimea and, of course, intense fighting in the east of your country. When you look back at what's happened over the last nine years, what do you think? Well, correct. The war started not in 2022. Russia waged the war against Ukraine in 2014. I was sworn in as a prime minister on the 27th of uh, February 2014. But on the 20th of February, Russia already invaded and illegally annexed Crimea. Uh, so and uh, Ukraine today and Ukraine nine years ago are completely different countries. We were out of uh, tanks, armor, uh, military, soldiers, army, cash, gasoline. This was the country on the brink of the complete collapse. Just uh, I am to remind to your um, listeners that uh, the former Minister of Defense was a Russian operative and a Russian citizen. I mean, Minister of Ukrainian Defense. The former head of the National Security was a Russian operative and Russian citizen. The former head of the uh, military intelligence was the Russian citizen and Russian operative. So it was a complete disaster. And, the, and it was very difficult for the world even to realize what's really happening on the ground. I had to convince presidents and prime ministers that, look, Putin and Russia already invaded Ukraine. These are not the green men without insignia. This is the regular Russian forces and Russian military. So we managed to actually withstand, we managed to deter Russian force, and we managed to survive. In 2022, Putin realized that he has to launch a large-scale offensive in order actually to take over an entire Ukraine uh, uh, as quick as possible. And the world realized that Putin posed the threat not only to Ukraine, but to every single free country. And, and even you in the United Kingdom, you felt uh, 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 the effects of this war and implications 
with the sovereign energy prices, with the inflation, with the food crisis, it, it, it was all masterminded, created and pushed personally by Putin and by his aggressive policy towards Ukraine and, and the entire world. So uh, uh, my take is that, look, um, we survived nine years ago. We stand a year after large scale Russian inv invasion. And there is no other option for, uh, for all of us and mainly for Ukrainians rather than to prevail in this war. And this is righteous war for Ukrainian people and for the entire Western world. Ah, it's interesting, Mr. Yatsenyuk, that. that you're talking about the entire Western world, and some have tried to frame it as the whole world. Um, you'll be aware that there was a vote in the United Nations last night, and about 130 or so countries voted with the resolution, demanding uh, that Russia leave Ukrainian territory immediately. About 31 or so uh, abstained, including China and India and other countries, and about nine went with Russia. How are you going to convince countries, say, in the global south, African countries particularly, um, Southeast Asia, um, Latin America, that this really is their war? Because some of them see Russia as a friend and they see what's happening between you, Ukraine, and Russia as something happening between Slavic brothers and it's not really their affair and it shouldn't be NATO's affair. First, first we are not any kind of Slavic brothers or brotherhood nations with Russia. Second, in 2014, as a prime minister, I address UNGA and UN Security Council. And at that time, we grabbed 100 votes for the resolution that condemned an illegal annexation of Crimea. This time, we already grabbed 141 votes supporting Ukraine and condemning Russian illegal invasion of Ukraine and uh, large scale uh, military offensive against Ukraine. Do we have problems with China and India? Yes, we do. And China that uh, uh, yesterday, uh, sorry, today unfolded the peace plan, that's uh, no more than the hot air that actually plays directly into the Russian hands. Because the key part of this so-called peace plan is the ceasefire, which, which, is, which is the way how to buy the time for the Russian Federation to regroup, rearm, and actually uh, relaunched its offensive against Ukraine. All the rest of the stuff, it's just mm, hot air and, and lip service. Uh, how can we, I mean, as Ukraine, uh, convince the global south? This is a joint task, not only for Ukraine, but for everyone in the free world. Uh, with the very clear cut messages that uh, this kind of uh, uh, aggressive Russian behavior pose the threat to their global, to their security, to their food security, to their energy security. Because I am not sure that we can we convince we can convince them with the definition of democracy, human rights, and liberties. But but we can we can def, we can somehow find the leverage and tools uh, how to get them on board with an economic stuff. On the other hand, let's be frank regarding China. Uh, China has completely different ambitions. China's ambition is uh, uh, to play a pivotal role in the new world. And in order to get this position, China wants to mitigate the influence of the West and mainly of the United States and how they call, how Russians call, Anglo-Saxon world. This is Putin's uh, beloved phrase. Mm. And that was Arsi Yatsenyuk, former prime minister of Ukraine, speaking to me a little earlier this evening.